All right, welcome into this week's Ozone Podcast. I'm John Osier, and I'm joined this week by Jaguar Center Mitch Morse. And Mitch, first of all, I appreciate you doing it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And 10th year guy, does Jaguar Center Mitch Morse, does that sound right by now? Are you used to that title? I would say, yeah, now that we've accrued some months here and the family's acclimated and we've just done some time on task, yeah, it does. It feels good. Easier to adapt to new situation after you've been in a league for a while because you sort of know. Absolutely. I guess know what to expect, although there's always newness when you switch a team. Absolutely. Yeah, I would just say there's always newness with, you know, when you change teams, there's always the unknown, which can be a little bit daunting. But you do have a lot more past experience to draw back upon. And then just I think you've played a lot of ball. You've gone through a lot of situations with different players, and you've had different line rooms, even in even in the same organizations, right? Like sure. you you stick around a place long enough, there's turnover as well. Right. So you've had that. But I think the thing that is the biggest difficulty, if there is one, is the the staff, the the people who really make this thing run. Okay. Um, just because we don't spend as much time with them, and you know, you have to draw so much on those guys and gals that. Uh, you don't want to just have a relationship where it's you asking for something right. or you're being something you want to actually build these kind of but relationships. it takes time to sort of get what you're talking about. Totally. Like a five-minute conversation and, and you need 30 of those, right? Exactly, so. right. Like you, we've all been around people who show up and try to be someone who they're not or, or, or try to, you know, just be this giant presence when you haven't spent the time with people. That's a quick to, way to never fit in. No right? doubt, yeah. right? Like, uh, you know, people see right through that. So that was my biggest fear uh, coming here, you know, but you don't have that much time to build these relationships, right? right? So it's a catch-22. Um, how do you uh, – you're brought in, and clearly as a 10th-year guy, it was said publicly a lot, need to provide some leadership, need to sort of set the example, and yet like what you're talking about, you still have to learn teammates. <clears throat> totally. So you can't come in acting like, hey, I – I pretty much know everything here. Just listen to the old wise guy. Like, so there's a balance there, right? A thousand percent, right? Like, first of all, as I, I've learned, the, the more I play this game, the less I know. Okay. There's so many intricacies of this game. So I would say that um, exactly like you said, no one respects that. Right. And you have to be who you are because people see through that too. And, and for me, I'm just going to try to be a professional every day. Mm-hmm. And hopefully the guys can see that. Is it going to be perfect? No. Like everyone has these tougher days. But when you have these relationships that you're slowly building, you can draw on certain guys to help you out of those holes. And uh, hopefully I'm a guy that can draw guys out because I'm going to need to be drawn out right. of holes. It's just the nature of this business. Do You just have to kind of trust at that point that, hey, you know, I've been in it for nine years. I know how to approach this. I've seen professionalism. It, if I behave that way, then – I know that's the right way, and guys will follow the example. I mean, just be a pro, right? Totally. Yeah, and and each day being a pro means something different. Okay. The day dictates what being a pro means, and I think that's the beautiful thing about this business, um, and it's also the most humbling part of it for sure. How do you uh, – sort of tie it into the next question, but the mood of the week. Obviously, a game that could have been won, sort of a tough gut punch. Mm -hmm. Um is there a role that you play in terms of uh, setting the example for how to handle that? Or do you just have to do it the same way you're talking about it? Hey, I know what I have to do. I have to come to work. I think it would be the latter okay. rather than the former, right? Like um, it was a gut punch, right? Like we, we felt like we had every opportunity to win that game right. and, and we felt like we, we lost it, right? The defense put in, had an outstanding performance and I, you know, we just made little mistakes. We lost as a team, yes, but – you know, I think we can look as an offense and, and see where we let some things slip through our hands. And, and the beautiful thing about this game is we have an opportunity most Sundays to r remedy those mm -hmm. mistakes. Now, granted, that's not going to be very easy versus uh, defense like sure. the, the Browns have with you know, Coach Schwartz. So, um, yeah, I, the, the last thing you also want to do is – ride these roller coasters these waves of extreme highs and devastating right. lows which is the nfl it's what people want you to do right and if you do that you can't last 
20 or so weeks that you want to. Easier because to do that as a out. veteran? Sort of see that it's not. At times, at okay. times, but it it's, it's, it'll, it'll still get you. <laughs> right. It'll still get you. You you, it is easier for yeah. sure, and it's not like this big. It doesn't hit you. It doesn't blindside you. Right. But it's still you have to remind yourself to not ride the wave because, gotcha. I think the hardest thing is when you things are going well. Mm-hmm. Right. It's hard not to yeah. drink the Kool Aid. Right. Like, so I. I this, What's this the move this week? <clears throat> I mean, it, as, you know. I know you don't, haven't seen all these guys in this situation before, sure. but you feel like uh, the team's approaching it the right way, I guess is what I'm asking. Yes, I do. I think Doug put us in a position where we get to go back to work, and I thought the coaches were constructive with us in their criticism. They weren't uh, just detrimental or demeaning. And we also have teammates and professionals that do a good job of looking inward. Mm-hmm. Uh, what individually we could have done better to do that and hopefully put our best foot forward against a very competitive uh, Cleveland's Browns team. Sort of a big picture question, probably dating back to when you got here. What do you like about this bunch that makes you feel good about the season? Even, even without like the resiliency topic of this week, but overall, what do you like about this team? What gives you hope? I think they're just so hungry to to win and to make a push, right? And I also like the fact that no one takes himself too seriously, mm-hmm. right? And like, there are self-deprecation is the greatest form of not right. only comedy, but also of ways to be vulnerable. Sure. And no one takes himself too seriously. And that's easy to rally behind. Right. And, and even the QB, right? Even I mean, the QB. Which yeah. matters. Yeah. Totally. Right. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's not get mistaken. Like, the QB sets the tone for the locker room. Right. It is what it is. Right. You have your leaders on offense and defense. This is a quarterback-driven league. Right. And uh, the way that he goes, the team goes. And, and we're very fortunate to have the guy we have, not only as a physical specimen in regards to sure. what, what he's able to do and his capabilities in the, in the field, but just the way he carries himself in the locker room. Easy guy to follow. Totally. Got you. Um, I, I mean, I have something that I heard you talking about during training camp that's fascinating to me. And you were talking about how, uh, I'm going to paraphrase you poorly, but how, you know, you're physically at your best when you enter the league. Mm -hmm. And then once you get to the end, you know so much more about it. And there's that intersection you're waiting for. And I'm not saying it very well, but you know what I'm talking about. Totally, yes. Is is it better to be experienced or is it better to be great oh, physically? man. Or is it just I th- impossible? I think there it? is that line where they cross, right? right. And, and I would say, um, man, that's, that's a really good question. I think Because you put that so well. It's something if, if you watch the league, you see guys go through it sure. every year. Yeah. And handling it must just be, well, I guess that's the job, right? That's, yeah, totally. Well, I think also, I mean, even young guys go through ailments and such, right? But um, well, I believe what I said was by the time you really get to appreciate this game, you can't quite do what you that, we used to be able right. to do. Um, it doesn't mean you still can't do your job. Right. But, you know, you're, you bounce back so much quicker in recovery right. and you're just able to do these things that – you know, it's you life, recruit. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's as his life, yeah. and I think it's a microcosm of what the grand scheme of things mm-hmm. are, right? So, um, I don't know if there's totally a right answer to that question. Right. It's a very good question, yeah. and uh, if I had time to think about sure. it, I'd give it to you. But maybe if you ask me again, I'll have thought about it because it's a very good question. <laughs> What's the? Uh, and this is a bad question, but it, it, you know, <laughs> the, the key to offensive line play. Like it, you've been doing this for a long time. I've been around offensive lines that, you know, were not necessarily five all pro players, but they were really good offensive lines. Right. Been around the opposite too. Uh, what's the most important thing that an offensive line as a group can have? Well, people like to say cohesiveness, sure. right? Like you want the same five guys playing together, but the reality of the business is that's a rarity to play all 17 plus games with everyone together. But as long as everyone is on the same page and sees the same thing or how you're going to attack certain blocks in a certain way um, or communicated mm-hmm. in, the, in the proper way, I think that's the most important thing. What do you like about, you know, I asked about the team earlier, but this group, this offensive line, 
every offensive line gets so much scrutiny. It, it's the cruelest position because <clears throat> one bad play means you had an awful day, right? <laughs> no doubt. So, um, but overall, this group, uh, you know, what's going to be the key for you guys? And uh, I say, how good can you be? But do you feel like this can be a group that uh, is the engine of the offense? Well, I, I think that those teams that make pushes they have a offense or defensive line or both i would say usually both that are the catalyst for the guys who have more athletic ability to make plays whether mm-hmm. it's the back end of a defense or uh the skill position on offense that's just the nature of right. the beast right, like <laughs> right that's yeah. just that's just the truth of it um I think what you want to do is you want to be able to be better the next week than you were before. Right. You know, you want to put your best foot forward every week and you know that the next week your your foot, you know, that's going to be a better foot mm-hmm. you put forward and you hope so. And that's what you strive to do in practice and um, you go from there. Did you feel like you guys established a base last week? It looked for, for three quarters, certainly it looked like dominating the run game. It looked like there was something to build on. Totally. Yeah, I think there wasn't – we don't want to totally scrap what happened on uh, the game. You know, we're sick to our stomach on that we didn't end up with a win. That's the only stat line that matters, sure. right? Um, but you have to be constructive. There are things we liked about it, and and, uh, and we're going to try to just compound those. Got you. What's the key – and this, again, is a little philosophical here, but the key to NFL longevity. Like, cool. you've been playing 10 years – I'm sure a lot of guys that you came into the league with that you probably thought were maybe better players totally. aren't here anymore. How do you do that? Uh, I don't know if people are going to like this answer, but I think a lot of it's circumstantial. Okay. Right? Like who you end up with, you know, the first team you go with, are they in, you know, nurturing in regards to nurturing a career, not so much your emotions. Right? Sure. Like right. do they push you enough but also don't break you in regards to – your ability to be pliable and, right. and and to be the kind of you know professional you can be, you have to have luck with um, front offices being patient or seeing you as a guy, and then you also have to be a good teammate in the locker room right. because those guys uh, you have to be a special talent to stick around if you're a dickhead, sure. right? Like that's just the right. nature of it, right? And I wish there was a better way to say it. And then you also have to be a little bit fortunate with injuries, um, and you know everyone's going to sustain them. Sure. And then you just have to be able to adapt. Right. And no matter it's situational, if it's in the grand scheme adapting or daily adapting and do that. And then for me, when I got married to my wife, who's my best buddy, okay. life got a lot easier too. And we got two kiddos. And right. um, to have that opportunity to remove church and state so that when I'm here, yeah. I'm fully in football. But when I'm home, I'm present dad which is harder said than done sure. because it's that's hard it's, it's, yeah. it's totally hard i mean for any profession not to bring bad work days home right so um a final question on these lines it sounds like you like where it's at oh and one is not where you want to be no. but you like uh the state of the franchise if you will after totally. yeah. after game why what i just like the i mean the last few days of practice the energy level was okay it was just like I said it was constructive yet there was a sense of urgency like everything you need to do after a win or a loss right right? like if we had won that game there's still plenty of things to work on sure loads right so um yeah it's just it's a a good locker room to be part of and and to be in this part of my career and have this opportunity is a, a blessing got you final thing we do we call it the ozone five it's five fast questions Mitch Morris, what was your last binge watch? Last binge watch was uh, Vikings on Netflix. Good. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. Okay, yeah. gotcha. The last song you heard this morning on the way in? Uh, Josh Turner, South Carolina Low Country. Okay. Uh, sport you would have played if it hadn't been football? I mean, you also have to think, like, I don't know, basketball was my favorite sport growing okay. up. Gotcha. I was not going to go anywhere with it. <laughs> football was it really much. Uh, best opponent you've ever played? Ooh, man, I, it just changes every like every guy I go too against. Many, yeah. There's too many, man. It's it's I hard, and 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 some of them are out in the league, and some are in the league, and it's just That's there's fair. a lot of good football players. 
uh, person who's most responsible for you being here? Uh, I will make it a pair of my parents. Okay. Yep. Good deal. Thank Mitch you. Morris, I appreciate it. On a busy week, you joining the Ozone Podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.